everyone, this is Steve here. All right, so I had another request come through today about the subject of complex chords. Now, it's complex chords, it's a bit subjective anyway. You know, the, you know, what chords are complex for some people, aren't complex for others, and you know, and, and I understand that. But really, a lot of these chords that you hear that kind of fall under this category, a lot of them are actually quite simple, straightforward chords that have just been disguised in such a way to give them a more ambiguous quality. So um, I'm going to show you a few um, things that you can do to make your chords sound you know, this is a bit more interesting really, so let's get right to it. Now, the first thing that's going to help you out a lot, um, not only with playing chords, but just playing guitar in general, you've got to learn your notes on the guitar, all right? You've got to be really, really good at this. The more adept you are at learning the notes on the instrument, the easier you're going to find to do all of this stuff. Um, that being said, I might even make another video where I'll show you a few other things, you know, concepts I've learned over the years about finding all the notes all over the fretboard and stuff like that. But that's the first thing that I'd recommend that you swat up on. The next thing as well, even with chords you already know, just, you know, real, you know, things like basic triads, you know, things like this. Chords like that. You know, you learned, you know, day one, week one of playing guitar. Um, knowing what notes are actually in those chords is going to help you out as well. Because, the, you know, chords are, the definition of a chord is two or more notes played together all at the same time. And chords come from scales. So all of those chords that I just played there are all just notes from a major or a minor scale all being played together at the same time. I mean, for example, let's take in this, um, this C major chord. Now, this is from the C major scale, which is this. Okay, if we were to number all of those notes from one through to eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight being the octave of where we started, the C major chord uses notes 1, 3, and 5, all being played at the same time, like this. And in this particular instance, those notes actually go in alphabetical order, because even when you put the other two in, you're playing the notes C, E, G, C, and E. But because of the way a guitar is laid out, that's not always the case. I mean, if we were to take an A major chord, for example, like this. So the same concept applies. This is notes 1, 3, and 5 from the A major scale. 1, 3, 5, A, C sharp, and E. But the notes this time around, you're going to play like this. A, E, A, C sharp. So you've got two A's, two E's, and one C sharp. So, again, if we were to give the numbers, you've got one, five, one, three, five. So knowing that about the chords you already know is, is quite important, I think. Now, the chord I'm going to be showing you, um, the next part of, is going to be this uh, C major seven chord, the note C, E, G, B. Now, this is again very much a textbook kind of chord shape. You probably already know this. It's basically, a, if you don't, it's just an ordinary C major chord with the first finger taken off. And you get that. But again, this chord isn't particularly interesting. Yeah, it sounds nice, but it's not that exciting really. You've heard it you know, a million times before. So, how we make this more interesting is we start learning about what are called inversions. Now, what are inversions? What they are is chords where all you're going to be doing is rearranging the notes in a different sequence. So instead of notes 1, 3, 5 and 7, this time you'll begin on note number 3. So you'll go 3, 5, 7 and 1. And then you start on the 5 and you go 5, 7, 1 and 3 and stuff like that. But while that sounds very straightforward in principle, again, because of the way a guitar is laid out, Doing it like that is going to present you with a bit of a problem. The first problem being that this chord is nice and easy. 
If we then take all of these notes and we move them alphabetically, so for instead of one, three, five, seven, we're going to go to three, five, seven, and then the one, that means the C is going to go up to the E, the E will go to the G, the G will move to the B, and the B will move to the C. So what that means is you're going to end up with this absolutely horrendous chord that I can't even play, and it's going to be like this. That's from the seventh fret to the first fret. Okay, you you want to have a bash at that? <laughs> Go for it, because I mean I, I can't play it. You know my hands won't reach that far. The next the next shape of this where we're going to go notes. Five, seven, one, and three. That's going to be G, B, C, E. That one isn't too bad. And the final one, where we're going to go B, C, E, and G. That's pretty uh, horrendous as well. I'll have, to, I'll have to cheat and do it like that. So, yeah. Now, those type of voicings, you know, don't let all this stuff put you off. Think, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to play chords that sound like this or whatever. You don't play these type of chords on the guitar. These are piano chords, basically piano voicings, um, which is why on a the guitar they, you know, they've got a nice sound, but they're just so horrific to play. So we can still do this principle of moving the notes alphabetically, but we can do it with shapes that are a lot more guitar friendly, shapes you already know. So this time around, we're going to use this version of a C major seven instead. Shape. You can also strum this and play it as a bar chord, uh, but I'm only playing the middle four strings here, the four notes that we need. So this time we've got a C, a G, a B, and an E, which is notes one, five, seven, and three from the C major scale. So this chord, by the way, where the C is the first note, there's a, well, C is called the root note, by the way. Classical players call it a tonic, um, it's a tonic root note, it's exactly the same thing. Um, when that note is in the bass, the root note or the tonic is in the bass, this chord is known as a root form. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move all of these notes alphabetically. So our C is going to go up to our E, because that's the next note in the chord, C to E. The G is going to go to the B, because that's where it would normally go, C, E, G, B. The B is going to go to the C, and the E is going to go to the G. So now we're going to get this. Sounds very, very nice. Now this time, the E, or the third, is the note that's in the bass. This is what's called a first inversion. Let's do the same process again. This time the E is going to move to the G. Our B is going to move to our C. Our C is going to move to our E and our G is going to move to our B. So now we're going to end up with this. So now our G or our fifth is the note that's in the bass. Okay, that's called a second inversion. So let's do this one more time. Our G is going to move to our B. Our C is going to move to our E. Our E is going to move to our G, and our B will move to the C. So we end up with that. Now, in this case, the B, or the seventh, is the note that's in the bass, and this is called a third inversion. So, to show you all those quickly again, we've gone root form, first inversion, second inversion, and the third inversion form where we started, just an octave higher. And as you can hear from all those examples, our C major 7 chord has gone quite away, you know, because most people, if they play a C major 7, are going to do this. You know, not many people are going to do this. It's exactly the same chord, it's just being played in a different way. This, this idea, this concept of taking all the notes in the chord, learning about them, and moving them alphabetically through the chord, you can do this with any chord that you want, okay? And when you get good at this and you've learned a few of these, a few of the shapes, 
you can start taking ordinary chord progressions and using some of these inversions and really making them sound you know, very, very interesting. And the other thing you can do as well is, you know, you can you can put the notes anywhere you want. So, I mean, for example, let's kind of make something a bit crazy here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go C G on the lowest two strings, and I'm gonna play a B and an E on the highest two strings. Yeah, a bit random, bit crazy. It's still a C major seven. So that's one example. Here's another example. Okay, take an take an A seven chord. So this shape here, you probably probably know this. I've got that classic, you know, blues sort of sound to it. Okay, especially if you bend uh, the the G up as well. You've probably heard that in quite a lot of blues songs. But here's the thing, you know. If you're playing a, a chord progression and you're using this, you might think, "Ah, oh, this chord, you know, it's nice, but it it sounds too bluesy." Take the note on the high E string and put it on the low E string. Now it doesn't sound bluesy anymore. It's got a very ambiguous quality to it. People are going to listen to it and then think, oh, "Blimey, what's that?" It's just an A seven. All you've done is put this note on the E on, from this E string to this one. Okay, people, so we'll leave that there for the day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, as always, please like and subscribe to my channel. Any more requests for anything guitar-related, please let me know, and I will do my best to film it. All right, people, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.